a water from that now of 44 years. Hey, hey, <laughs> <going>. <laughs> I came in 1972 for 12 months. I couldn't find my way home. Uh, I was too fond of the place. <clears throat> um, Padraig O'Mila, the singer and the song, the song Shriv Galgua Nefela by Padraig O'Mila. Um, in a way, it's a, an unsung hero, which is a strange thing to say about a famous song. Now, with regard to the song, I think the knowledge of it uh, varies from very little to an awful lot among the audience and with the general population and whatever. So it occurred to me that um, we should know a little bit more about probably the best known song of our, no, there are other songs of immigration, but in the Shannos canon, uh, 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 every one of them has Shlieb Gal Guen Fela in their no, repertoire. Uh, so I thought, whatever about having heard of the song, and actually heard the song, very few people, including myself up to a couple of years ago, had a clue about the man who wrote it. And I would call him one of the quiet heroes, and he dates from, born in uh, 1877, but he grew up and probably wrote this song around this time, 100 30 years ago. He was born in up in Shkehin, which is up in the Nair, uh, Bell in the Mult, Knock Boy, and uh, uh, sort of Knock Boy and um, such places. And immensely pride. Now, Pardig was reared by his grandfather, Wirish, and only had, like many, most at that time had just had primary, came from a humble little home, uh, had primary education. There was no English taught in the schools then. Um, so uh, he taught through English. He was well taught. He even followed his school teacher to another parish when he moved. Um, so this was a sharp lad, you know? And uh, he, on leaving school at 12, uh, he had developed a grow. Well, his grandfather spoke Irish. He only spoke Irish at home, but he couldn't read or write Irish. So he self-taught himself not only how to read and write Irish, but set about um, reading the literature behind it and uh, all its poetry and its stories, um, etc. Like many another man at that time, by 1903, no employment. Uh, he took the boat, the, um, the Great Western, from just across here, from Adelphi Quay. In those days, uh, it went to Milford Haven, and he crossed like hundreds of thousands of others, went over in the seek of work in South Wales. There was a huge connection, greater than people realised, between Waterford and South Wales, the amount of people that went over to work there. We think of London and Dagenham and places like that, but an awful lot went to South Wales, particularly from Waterford, because it was such a handy run over. Um, in the Great Western. So he left here in 1903, probably past the Parade Hotel here, maybe had been in here for a cup of tea or whatever before he left with not much more than the price of the fare in his pocket. And he landed in, made his way to the Swansea Valley to a village called Clydoch. Soon afterwards he found a job in a nickel factory, hard work in the nickel factory, the Mond South Nickel Factory. And he worked there for the next 20 years. But just didn't, I thought, live there. This was a very proud, watered man, Dacia man. And he lived with that pride of being a Dacia man uh, all his life. And that comes out in the song. That's what the song is about. It's a love song to the Dacia. It's a love song of praise and pining for his native place. Not just Car for Florida, but uh, up in that beautiful part of Waterford, the Nair between the Comrades and Nottingham Down. That's where he came from. And there he became a trade union activist well, uh, 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 in his work. Uh, he became a member of Conan O'Gwail, which had already been found in uh, uh, 1893. And here he was in South Wales after a full day's work at the furnaces in the nickel factory. Uh, going off uh, to teach Irish classes for the Conrad, 
after his um, sort of day's work, which tells us that a there was an interest in learning Irish, but it tells us that there was a how many Irish people were in South Wales Irish, uh, uh, who were interested in learning Irish. Because the Conor Gaelic's work and people wanting to learn Irish was huge a uh, hundred years ago. So here he was giving it, but he was very active in his treatment. Now he married <coughs> uh, not a Welsh girl, but a girl over the valley, up in the Nair, uh, Eileen Colnan, whose father was the David Colnan, mm -hmm. and uh, he, uh, they married there and had three kids, and they were a neighbour who also worked in the sort of nickel factory. <coughs> there was. Uh, <coughs> Now, the um, family would go to, a, to Swansea Bay, to the seaside, like we would go to Tremor, to the Mumbles was a popular mm -hmm. spot, and it was there he'd look out at the Irish Sea. Mm -hmm. And it must have been sitting on the bay there, um, looking out at the sea and thinking about his, you could nearly see water was on the fine day, as they say, uh, and where he wrote this famous uh, song. Now, he had written, Lots of other stuff, but this is the one I've lingered, and one other great work called uh, three, uh, three Generations in the, uh, in the Tree Gluina. Now, this guy, relatively young school, self taught, even school at 12. This was a literary work of noted merit, which is 112 pages long, 1,600 words, and it tells of the story in verse uh, from uh, 1840, the famine times right down to 1930, where his grandfather himself and his children and the period, and that very turbulent period uh, that he uh, sort of lived through. Um, he worked in the way, now there was a major strike, uh, there was a major strike in the factory, now he was blowing, uh, he backed, because he was a, was a very active trade unionist, uh, and uh, he backed the strike, and when the strike was resolved, he was told, bye bye, uh, we um, don't need you, uh, kind of thing, for supporting the strike. Whatever lies you, you'd have to a local man and his job back. Uh, you Irish can go back home where you came from, sort of attitude. So uh, he came back to work. One other thing that, uh, that ties in with uh, that period that back in the build up to the First World War, when the Irish volunteers were formed, here he was, over in Clydach, um, doing his Irish classes, and he started a little local battalion of the Irish volunteers. And they used to be going around the village in the small town there with brushes and shovels, out drilling and parading. He was very much never left home in that sense and bothered the politics closely. Uh, so he lost his job himself and his family, no income, um, came back to Ireland in uh, 1922, not a happy place to come back to in the throes of the Civil War. Uh, they struggled uh, for the next couple of years um, and, and through the help of neighbours and family, they saw the way through it. But he always had his love of Irish and his scholarship of Irish. And um, uh, he was offered the job. He was offered to go to training for the job teaching Irish. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then he was employed in Colossian or Rina right. yeah. from about 1929 to 1945 when uh, the hard work he had in the furnace factory, the smelting factory in Wales caught up with him and he died. Uh, he retired in 1945 through ill health and he died in um, 1947. Um, just uh, sort of two other quick things. Uh, before I read the poem, uh, I uh, mentioned about his three gluing the poem first. As I said, it's 112 lines long, and we're not going to go into it, we'll be here on until the next week. But I have a very quick summary, which I'm going to read, of that part of it, which affects our story. Uh, two of his notable compositions relating to that time in Wales. The first is his masterpiece, Three Gluing Now three generations, a poetic record of some of the events of Irish history from the 1940s to 1930s. The first part of the 112-page work, 1,600 lines, 
uh, deals with his own experiences in Wales and his return to Ireland. Here is a completely unexpected, fascinating eyewitness account of the experience of an Irish emigrant in the Swansea Valley in the early years of the 20th century. He describes the lone voyage, the first sounds of Welsh, the search for work, the almost lunar landscape of rapid development, the frenzy of the people caught up in the maelstrom, the Dante-like scenes in a coal mine, the noxious fumes that daily assail the workers in the nickel factory, the work of the trade union, and the strike that resulted in his return home. The second composition, which is our poem, um, uh, of note is his song, Schlieb Galguna Fehlen, a poem in a song that has, and song that has become accepted as one of Ireland's great songs of exile and one of the classics of the language and in the repertoire of Shannon singing. Padre, as I said, would often go down to the Mumbles and look across the sea mm -hmm. and it's on one such occasion he went home and uh, put pen to paper. Been inspired by Donnacaroo and Namara 200 years later, who had taught in Skehi, they didn't meet, but who had written a famous poem called Bon Kinnikir No, again about Waterford and the mountains from Newfoundland when he was over there with the fishing. And I'm sure Padraig was aware of that song and gave us the kind of a, a hundred years ago updated uh, version uh, of uh, Bon Kinnikir No. <coughs> he died in 1947. Uh, in uh, 1977, it was the 100th anniversary of his birth. Now this was a humble lad, self-taught, went off and worked, provided for his family, uh, worked in the nickel factory, worked hard. As I said, one of the quiet heroes, these guys that just get on with it. Remarkable people, if you pass them in the street, you take no notice. There's no statues to him. You know, because he's one of these quiet heroes. But, on the 100th anniversary, a committee got together, formed Eikshish Yibgua, and down to un uh, unveil a monument uh, to, uh, to him. This lad who had gone from Shkehi, now buried in Turinina. Uh, that's where the graveyard is, by Knock Boy. Turinina, funny name, or an interesting name. The Tower of Wine, you know, where does the name come from? I wonder. I'm into place names. <coughs> Uh, and so on. But at this on on uh, failing, you had Carola Dolly, Ukran Hiram, yeah. Tomas O'Fee, the Cardinal of Ireland down from Armagh. You had a slew of eminent scholars, professors, literary people, big name poets, and other people of the day down at the unveiling of this plaque, the Padrigo Millet, who sort of went with a little bag if he had a bag out of that parish. Uh, in in uh, the year 1903 and made his way to Wales. Uh, so <coughs> here, I when I read all that first, a a about Padre Milley, I said, what a remarkable man. And I said, what a pity, because I didn't know. I was an Irish teacher. I didn't know. Whatever. So what chance did a lot of other people know? that here we had this quiet hero amongst us that we knew so little about. And yet he's a man worth of note. That's why Johnny said, have you something to contribute? And I said, yes, I'd like to tell water people, including myself, about Padre Gomelet and his contribution to his own family, primarily to the Dacia, uh, to Ireland, uh, and he uh, lived a good life. As I said, a, a uh, quiet hero that left a great legacy behind him. Uh, his, there are many, as I said, great versions of his song. Uh, the great, it was set to music by his friend Nicholas O'Kyla because it was written uh, as a spoken verse. And uh, Nicholas O'Kyla uh, put an air to it and was first famously sung by the uh, great Nicholas Tobin from Ring, that's the definitive version. But to surpass that, not to surpass that, but to almost equal that, we have three women, three Menor and Nadesha. Uh, you have Anne Mulqueen from Chakyol Mooney's in Ring has a great version. Uh, the name of her album is McGraw's to How Nadesha, which is the line from the song. 
uh, you had Karen Casey from Valley yes. Dove. She's wowed all over in America currently yeah. for her fabulous yeah. voice. Yeah. And when she comes home every so often, catch her, she's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Foreign yeah. pupil as well. And then, of course, uh, it was a reference there, it was like here, Mary Green, who sits at, who stands and sings here at least two or three times a year. And as we can say, one of our own. Uh, very much, and we had hoped to sing her version. Joe, can I talk to you that yeah. for a second? Um, just before Joe goes on any further, a, a man has flagged himself to us, and he's been flagged to us independently as well, as a fantastic singer who actually knows this song. Oh. So we, we might get a rousing rendition. Aided and abetted. Aided and abetted by Kathleen Morris, who also knows the song. But in the meantime, continue the best of order, we'll let Joe finish his talk, and we'll go straight into the song then by Michal Marinin, okay? Excellent, excellent. That's better again than playing a CD. We were playing the CD as kind of second or third bit, even though it's beautiful. Uh, now, I go through the poem, I'm going to read all the alternate verses and uh, repeat the Irish with the last one because I'm going to do Irish, English, and then, but I want to finish with the last Irish verse, so I'll repeat it and then we'll hear the musical rendition, which is better again. <coughs> So hopefully we'll leave this morning with some appreciation of this hauntingly beautiful tune. So Shlieb Galgua, the Padre O Malay. O Shlieb Galgua na Fela, is father wit again me, im he kosh kuen im ener, go tre lag fuivron, until of we er heb diem ither me agus tir matleva, is a Shlieb Galgua na Fela, na gere muskyon. O bright sleep goer of the welcomes, you are far from me, my home. As I sit, I am weak with sorrow, here by the sea alone. The golden tide is just by me, is twixt me and my heart's land. O bright sleep goer of the welcomes, my story is not so grand. Thou mainche emas mugwelta, ishkehin glas na shebar. Nor a scop and tas na grena, o spare gal gan small. Nor da mengsha on shoot for an realtor, nor a hit and draw up er air on. O a shleeve gal goe, nor yerkshin, nor either e a da either e a oil. Were I among my own folk, kindly men of Shkehin's green, where the heat of the sun is scattered from the sky of flawless sheen. Oh, were I now beneath the stars, as dew falls on the grass there, or oh, you bright shleel gua, it would be a gift so rare. <coughs> is the is emalean not borme togans le lane is le morquid olish, in wailing usel kyorver for hyalta mavel, or oh, hooring court har sile is hooring bua har bark with. Mar Ashleev Galgua Babralam Kua or Du Quinlin. Oh, I am sad that I wasn't reared with learning and with art. In the noble, melodious Irish tongue, my mouth would have its part. And I would go back across the sea, and I would give you pride. And I would love to see Ashleev Gua, your fame go worldwide. Magrasa Haul Nadesha. Is there vaunted Glana Ishleta? O snob and owl hard train ver, time tre log gun breed. Is O bile deer made lekas, bus launch a sheer gaheran, or the slan the sleep in the feather, the sheer gang on free. There is, my love, the Dacies, every meadow, hill, and vale. Since I came o'er the mighty sea, I have grown weak and pale. But since God himself has called me here, my greetings go back home, back to that hill of welcome, for my heart with love alone. And finally, Magrasa howl in the desha, is the vault of Glanta Isleta, O snobus and owl heart trainer, from Freilag Gunbri, O boil a dear maid lakers, must launch a sheer coherent, or the slaunder sleeve in the feather. 
Go to my hoop. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Joe Fazio. A beautiful version. And now we're going to have Michal Marilyn, who's going to sing this song first. This beautiful song. It, it, with assistance from Kathleen Morris. <laughs> Well, just before I, before I sing that song, would, would you just give another round of applause to that gentleman just who spoke before me? Um, he just gave a, an A to Z account in as short a period as possible of a wonderful uh, person and wonderful waterman. But uh, I'm just an adopted waterman like like Donica Rua, like Donica Rua Connemara who came from near Ballinacally near Innes and County Clare and had quite an impact in the educational system up in the Comoros where I've been lucky to live for the last over 40 years. But I live pretty near where, near Shkehines, where Padre Gomele grew up. How does this is Bralum and all on so Connive know his father trail of until we are Till May was tear must live. Oh, if you gal go on the fella, not get him much girl. The man she must go elta, is she him glass ne shivar? No er scoping tas ne green on, on the spare hill. No, the mansion suit fin relton, nor hidden through the round. Oh, a hill gal go on the failure, the all. Shemalian of worst hogan, Elaine is more. In the quelling was a cholver by your tum of in the rowing quilter soil, so howling for her for wound, marred your galgua of Rayum to Dado Kirim. Across a howl in a dish, there want a clown to slater. Oh, no, son, no, and her train were on trail, log on free. A ghost tall, a dear, make their hands, Mulan says, Sheer go here. August long, less live in a fella, less air, young, no Go to me, Lamar. Thank you. I'm just to give an idea of the impact that Padraig had when he came back in 1923. He also went around the, the little halls up around the Comoros giving night classes to all the people there, and of course there was no radio or television at the time. My father-in-law, who lived in Kool Smear, went to the classes in Kool Smear. And Padraig's daughter, uh, she, be, she later became Banny Hallahan. Yeah. She is the mother of a man who you may have heard of called Monty Hallahan, yes. who had a huge impact in Irish dancing in the county. But, but Banny Hallahan herself has had a big impact because she taught the fiddle to many people around the uh, West Waterford and some of her pupils also had an impact later on and as you know County Waterford is now one of the most important places for traditional music in the whole of Ireland apart from Clare of course <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together for Michal Marinin 
and also Joe Falvey.